Good day, students. I am Sir Gilbert L. Lahara, your teacher in Mapi Nine. In today's lesson, we are going to discuss about Western and classical art tradition. Before we proceed to our lesson, let me first read our learning objectives. Identify the elements and principles of art. Explain the distinct characteristics of elements and principles of Western and classical art. And make an artwork applying the elements and principles of Western and classical art. Do you still remember the elements and principles of art? Let us first discuss the elements of art. Art elements are considered as the building blocks of art. It is the thing that we need to consider in order for us to make an artwork. The first one is lines. What do you know about lines? Do you know the different types of lines? Let's find out. Lines are the strokes that show motion and connect two points. In art, line represents many things. These things could be lines that shape the sides of the streets, edges of objects like furniture, jewelries, buildings, silhouettes of persons, or shapes of persons themselves. The next one we have shape and form. Shape is the area that stands out from the space. It can be geometric or freeform. When we say geometric, it has a definite shape, just like circle, triangle, rectangle, star, and heart. How about freeform? These are kinds of shapes that has indefinite shapes, just like the waves of the oceans and the shape of the clouds. Shapes are defined by artists using lines and contrast in color and texture. It is the area enclosed on both sides of a line meet. Next, we have the value and tone. The lightness and darkness of color is called value. It is the intensity of colors that the artist put in their artwork. The contrast between lightness and darkness can be used to create depth. This is shown in shading a portion of the drawing of an object to make it appear three-dimensional. The next element of art is color. Color is produced when artists use various pigments and dyes to create a range of different hues which the viewer's eyes and brains interpret as colors. Next one, we have Texture. Texture refers to the surface quality of an object or artwork. It can be simulated appearances of roughness or softness in visual arts or the actual surface feel of a work of art or craft. Next, we have Space. The space is a distance or area between, around, above, below or within things. The area occupied by object is called positive space, and the area between the object is often referred to as negative space. How about principles of art? Why is it important in an artwork? Let's find out. Principles of art are the rules and techniques that artists use to create works of art. That means Principles of art are our basis in order for us to critic or judge an artwork. Let's start with rhythm. Rhythm in art refers to the repetition of motif or elements of art. Rhythm can make an artwork seem active. Rhythm is present in an artwork if there is a repetition in the elements of art, such as lines, shapes, colors, texture, and color. Using some techniques, artists can somehow convey the illusion of movement. As you can see on the given example picture, that is an artwork that has rhythm. 
and because of the technique that the artist used in the artwork, it seems that the artwork is moving or alive. The next principle of art is balance. What do you know about balance? And why is it important in an artwork? Let's find out. Balance is the arrangement of elements so that no one part of a work overpowers or seems heavier than any part. Balance can be symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial symmetry. Let's start with symmetrical balance. When the art has same shapes, colors, and other elements are evenly distributed on either side of either the vertical or horizontal midpoint of a piece, there is a symmetrical balance. Next is asymmetrical balance. It is the opposite of symmetrical balance. When different shapes, colors, and other art elements are evenly distributed on either side of either the vertical and horizontal midpoint of a piece. Regional symmetry, when various art elements branch off from a central point. Let's proceed to the next principle of art, which is emphasis. Emphasis is to make one part of an artwork dominant over the other parts. It makes an element or object in a work stand out. And as you can see on the given picture, the artist giving emphasis on the rabbit which stood out in the painting. There is an emphasis when an extraordinary or different colors, lines, shape is placed in the midst of a regular pattern, just like on the given picture. You will be focused more on the red umbrella rather than the black one because the red umbrella gives emphasis in this given art. The next principle of art is harmony. When the art elements like colors, shapes, and lines complement one another, harmony is created. And as you can see on the given picture, there are different colors, shapes, and lines which the artists use in their artwork, but it complemented with each other, the harmony is present. How about unity? Why is it considered as a principle of art? Let's find out. Unity relates to the sense of oneness, wholeness, or order in a work of art. Combining similar colors, lines, shapes, textures, and patterns in an artwork creates unity and harmony. The next is variety. Variety is a principle of design concerned with diversity or contrast. Variety is achieved by using different shapes, lines, colors, and other elements of art. The next principle of art is proportion. Proportion refers to the relationship of a certain element to the whole and to each other. It is the comparative relationship of one part to another with respect to the size, quantity, or degree. We are done reviewing the elements and principles of art. So now we are going to tackle about ancient art. The picture on the screen are examples of ancient art. As you can see and observe, it is very different from the artwork that is made and created today. What are the characteristics of ancient art? And how is it deeper with a modern artwork? People who lived thousands and thousands of years ago used pictures instead of words to tell a story or send a message. The drawing at the right side were animal figures which is partly drawn and cast into the rock during the ancient The animal figure was found on the wall of a in Lascaux, France, 25 years ago. The first people to draw pictures had no written language. 
This cave man drew pictures on the walls of their cave to tell stories. The cave men drew how they hunted bison, rhinoceros, and the charging mammoth. This artwork shows how the cave men lived during that time. What do the cavemen use in their drawing? The cavemen use pieces of red and yellow ochre for chalk, which gives colors to their drawing. They also use sharp lake points to cut lines into their rock walls. Today, we can still see their drawings on the walls of caves in France and Spain. Like the cavemen, other people who lived long ago use pictures and drawings instead of words to tell a story or send a message. Now we're going to proceed to the discussion of classical art. The term classical may be applied to all art and music from a specific period in history during the 715 to 1820. In the strictest sense, this is a term used to characterize the art, literature, aesthetic, created by the ancient Greeks and Romans. In the visual arts, a sense of control in handling of the things and sense of order and proportion of forms are observed. Paintings from Ancient Egypt The purpose of Egyptian painting is to make the deceased afterlife place pleasant. With this in mind, themes include journey to the underworld introducing the deceased to the gods of the underworld by their protected deities. Egyptian painting shows mythological representations and scenes of the everyday activities of the Egyptians, such as hunting, fishing, farming, and banqueting. This kind of painting were first found on the walls of the Paroa's tombs more than 5,000 years ago. It emphasizes the importance of life after death and the preservation of the knowledge of the past. Most paintings were highly stylized, symbolic, and shows a profile view of an animal or a person. The main colors used were red, black, blue, gold, and green, taken derived from a mineral pigment that can withstand strong sunlight without failure. Paintings from Classical Greek Era Paintings during the Classical Era were most commonly found in vases, funnels, and pots. It depicts natural figures with dynamic compositions. Most of the subjects were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. It reveals a grasp of linear perspectives and naturalist representation. Most Common Methods of Greek Painting First one is fresco, a method of painting water-based pigments in a freshly applied plaster, usually on the wall surfaces. Colors are made with green powder pigments in pure water, dry and set with a plaster to become a permanent part of the wall. Ideal for murals, durable and has a matte style. The next one is encaustic. It develops to use by Greek shipbuilders who used to have the walls to fill the cracks of the ship. Soon, pigments was added and used to paint a wax pot. Now let's discuss the paintings from the medieval era. Byzantine painting The lively styles of paintings which have been invented in Greek and Rome live on Byzantium but this time for Christian subjects. By the 11th century, the Greek and Oriental styles seem to blend together in magnificent, imposing images which adorn the churches in large and small forms. The next one is Romanisky painting. These are largely placed mosaics on the walls of the churches that follows a strict frontal pose. It has a remarkable variety of artistic traditions such as modeling and treatment of faces and draperies that follow Byzantine convention while the refreshingly decorative feeling comes from southern French styles. 
it also shows traces of Mozarabic influence or Arabic influence through elongated oval faces, large staring eyes, and long noses, figures against flat color bands and heavy outline. Paintings from the Gothic era Paintings have been confined in the illumination of the manuscript pages and the paintings of rascals on the walls of churches in cosmopolitan styles, elegant, modern, and sophisticated. Subjects usually depict popular legends and love stories. Patterns like milk fleur or cast and flowers shows influence which may have been due to the crusades. That's the end of our lesson for today. I hope you learned from it. Thank you and God bless you all.